What up everybody, how y'all doing? It's Daya here and today we're going to be doing a tutorial on how to draw monolithic eyes. First, a couple things. Ignore the mess behind me for one. Two, um, yes I'm aware that I've already posted a short form version of this on my other platforms. However, I've realized that that is too fast for some people. And so what this video is going to be and the videos after this are going to be basically me doing the tutorial from start to finish so you get to see every single step of the process okay so let's talk about what you're gonna need all right so you this is optional a ruler you see i've like measured out the area with which i'm going to draw the eye at first i was drawing both eyes we draw one today because that was 20 minutes um anyway so um uh needed an eraser that's, I just like to use these when I, cause I, I sketch relatively hard. So like, I just, it's great to remove the areas I sketched really hard on. You'll see in a minute. Um, a pencil. This is a 2H pencil and this is what I sketch with and stuff like that. I could use a HB, but I'm not going to. Um, so yeah. And you got uh, an eraser. This is an, a vinyl eraser here. Um, I don't use any other kind of eraser other than a needed one. Um. We have a tiny eraser. This is the Tombow Mono Zero. Let's see if the YouTube thing works. It didn't. Okay, thank you, webcam, for nothing. Um, and then some blending stubs and tortillin, tortillins. <laughs> Still can't pronounce that. Still cannot pronounce that. Anyway, let us begin. So today our reference is a Rapmon, okay? All right, he's way too cool for his own good. I had to draw him. Actually, I think it's RM now. Don't understand why they keep shortening their names to letters. Um, don't come for me, Army. Don't come for me. <laughs> okay, anyway, let's get into it. So, get a reference here so you can see. I have it on my computer screen because it's kind of, you know, small on my phone. Anyway, let us begin. So, um, if we're looking at Ramon's eyes or RM, we can see that they kind of like go upwards towards the end. And I think this is like, I think, I think he has upturned eyes, but basically you can have upturned monolithic eyes anyway. So basically the, what makes his eyes monolithic is that he doesn't have like a crease, but you know, anyway, let's just, let's get into it. Okay. So I'm going to start, you know, I was doing a football shape at first. No more of that because it messes me up. Okay. So we're not going to draw a football shape to begin with or a flicked football shape. We're going to just start drawing the top of the eye right here. And since his eye is upturned, the inside of his eye right here is going to be lower than the outside of his eye, which is going to be higher. You'll see what I mean in a minute. All right. So relatively is curved here. Um, Sorry for the blurriness too. I don't know why my webcam is acting up. I hate it for that. Um, but yeah, so this is the top of his eye. I think that's pretty accurate. Um, then I'm going to do the bottom. It's kind of pointed right here and it kind of levels out and goes up at the end, like right here. It's a lot of his like, the. I don't know if this is a tear duct, but I, I'm gonna call this like the opposite tear duct. It's a lot of this exposed in his eye. I haven't really seen that before. It's interesting. But um, I'm going to connect that to the other side. And that is the basic shape. Webcam. I'm hating you right now, webcam. That's the basic shape. Ah, focus for five seconds. So you are capable of it. I hate this. I hate it. Um. Be aware that he is looking up, so his iris position is going to be different. But right now, I'm drawing his tear duct in his eye. You can see it kind of stops right there. Um, then, like his waterline, it goes around here, and then the bottom of the other opposite tear duct is what we're gonna call it, even though I said that already. Um, a lot of that exposed. Yes, that looks right. That looks right. Oh, I'm noticing something now. He, his eyes actually might not be upturned. No, they still are. Okay, but this part goes down a little bit more right here. Um, is what I'm noticing from the picture on my computer screen. Um, anyway, sorry for the reflection too. Anyway, there's a lot of things we gotta get squared away. 
Now I'm going to draw his iris. Which, since he's looking up, the iris is going to be like half covered. Because in, re like, in reality, it's like a circle, but you can only see about half of it. So I'm going to draw half of it. And if you have problems drawing a semicircle, I would say like draw a full circle. And as you can see, like my circles aren't perfect, but I just do enough rotations that it starts looking better. <laughs> and then I erase like where I want it to so that it ends up looking like a perfect circle. You see what I'm saying? See, now it's starting to look like a perfect circle. So you really don't know how, don't need to know how to draw a perfect circle for this kind of stuff. Anyway, so, oh, his, um, I'm just noticing his iris is a little, like, pointier around this area. Um, so it's less circular, it's more like oval-like. Um, anyways, that's good enough. It ain't gotta be perfect, okay? Um, I am noticing... So newsflash, I'm a perfectionist, <laughs> um, if you didn't realize that. It is a curse. It is not a blessing. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. It's looking better now. Okay. I'm satisfied. Am I? Because I'm still drawing. Okay. Now we're going to draw his pupil, which again, since his iris would be like this big in reality, like all around here. Um, I'm going to place it right here. His eyes are kind of dark though, so it is kind of hard for you to see, like with um, dark and like brown eyes and stuff like that. It's hard to come on, phone, quit acting a fool. Um, it's kind of hard to see the pupils, but I'm still going to draw it just so I know where it is. Okay, so now we got that square. I'm gonna erase this top low guideline. And you see, like, we're, we're doing, we're doing pretty good. We're doing pretty good. Okay. Um, so, now, what the next step is, I think, well, okay. I'm noticing that there is this, like, this isn't a crease. It's more like a shadow right here. Again, since his eye, he doesn't have a crease in his eye. It's more like a shadow, like, right here. And so I'm going to mark that. It's a little bit lower actually like that's where his like the end of his eyeball like right here that's the best way i can explain it um yes so i do believe that we now have the basic shape and it only took us seven minutes all right um so now we're going to shade and this part is optional of course depending on what you want to do whether you want to paint sketch i mean not sketch whether you want to paint i'm recording um, whether you want to paint or, uh, come on now, use graphite to like, or charcoal or whatever, um, just up to you. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my kneaded eraser and I told you like I sketched pretty like, pretty hard. So I'm going to remove some of the graphite from my sketch. I think I really should invest in the HB pencil because... 2H seems to be too much. Um, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> it's not important. Um, all right, so you just see I'm, I'm picking up the graphite with this kneaded eraser. That's how I like to do it. Just kind of smear it on there and lift it up. And you see that the graphite's coming off because the sketch is getting lighter. Really wish this webcam would focus. It did for five seconds, so it's capable of it. This is infuriating. Anyway, um, now we shade. So if we look, I'm only going to use like a couple of shading pencils. Uh oh, seem to have misplaced them. All right, getting up in the middle of the video. This is just going wonderful, isn't it? Okay. Still missing a couple of pencils. It's fine. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my 2H pencil. My, nope, this was a 2B. My 2H pencil. And my 8B pencil here. And those are the only ones I'm going to use because I don't want it to get too complicated. And, yeah, because if you do too much, it just becomes a chore. 
I really wish, really wish I knew where my pencils were. Like they were just here. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Anyway, because I have some leadless pencils. I mean, not woodless. All right. Anyway, so we're going to look at his eye and the different parts of it. So you can see like the darkest value is right here in the eye. Right here. So I'm going to use my 8B pencil to kind of draw out that area. And it's kind of like a little shape like this up in there. And I'm going to make it darker eventually. It's just I don't want to start out going as dark as possible with it. Now also you can kind of see, I'm going to use my 2B pencil for this. That there is kind of like a dark area around the top of his eye that kind of like defines it. So I'm going to add that as well. And I can still see, if you can't see my sketch, I still can. So that's what I'm going off of right now. Also, I'm going to use my 2H to shade around this 8B. And I'm shading kind of loosely like this because I'm going to blend it with the blending stump, stump or the tortillon. That word just is never going to seem right. Anyway, so now I'm using my 2H. Shade the outside because you can see it kind of gets his eye kind of it gets lighter on the outside of the guy. Iris. And now that is the iris done. I'm also going to it's my hair, my bad. Um use my 2H to kind of blend out the dark part of the eye right here. I just added because it's like a shadow from the eyelid being on top of the eyeball. And then I'm going to add some shading here in the tear duct and waterline because as you can see it's a lot darker around these areas and you can see it's already starting to come together so now I'm going to use my 8B over here because it kind of gets a lot darker over here too this just shows you that you really don't need a bunch of pencils for this kind of stuff. Like, honestly, more pencils is more anxiety for me. <laughs> Too many choices. Um, it's really dark over here, like at the top of the eye. I really should have sharpened these too. Was not prepared. We'll remember this next time. Um, we'll go here. Okay, so now that we got the main basis for the eye oh okay this just in i'm noticing a little bit darker values right here under kind of like the waterline and tear ducts and stuff just right there okay i do believe that's it except for maybe like right here a little bit area right here Oh yeah, and this right here too. I think I'm going to take make the decision that the outside of the eye, like I'm going to shade the skin a little bit here. Again, loosely shading, loosely and lightly shading, if you will. And then shading a little bit harder here, but still using like the side of the pencil so that I can blend it out. And you can see I'm already kind of blending it, but not as much as I will with the blending stump. Now, take a good look. That's what we got so far. Dag nab at this webcam. Um, and so now we're going to use a blending stump. And so the way I use these is I use the darkest shades, like to, I um, blend the darkest shades with one side and the lighter ones with the other side. As you can see, it's, it's double sided. Anyway, so this is the darker shade side. So I'm going to blend the iris right here. Is that closer in the middle? Sorry about that, y'all. Did not know it was off camera almost. Right here. And I'm using the lighter side to kind of blend out the lighter shades. Okay. Good start. You can kind of see like a line. I don't really want that effect to be there. Um, then I'm going to take the darker side. 
filling up this two B part of the eye right here. Eventually, I'm going to erase these dot lines as well using the lighter shot side to blend right here. A little bit of blending here that I can see in the image. Mm, I might have to erase that. It's looking a little too. Oh, I did not erase the guidelines in the middle. Okay, right here. That I added to center of the eye. Anyway, back to using this. Blend it out lightly. I think I'm gonna yeah, add that to separate it a little bit more. And as you can see, like once the color is on the blending stump, you can kind of use it to like re add darker shades in other areas, you know. Bring this out here. Okay, gonna erase the guideline. my guy line here. Sixteen minutes more. What I tell you? I'm gonna have to get better at this at some point. All right. Ooh, one thing I forgot. I'm going to get a much more clean blending stump. I'm gonna kind of blend this lighter area because I don't want it to get muddy and dark. It's better to use the entire side of the blending stump. It just blends easier. Give me just a little tip that I seem to keep forgetting when I use them myself. Okay, I'm not gonna blend out this area. It's not perfect, but it's, it's doing the job. You know what I'm saying? I didn't really, my placement of that could have been better. I'm going to erase this a little bit here. There go my phone, turn it off. Okay. Because as you can see, the area that's like dark around the top of the eye is very thin. So I need to convey that through my image. Or my sketch, at least. Whatever this is at this point. Let's see, find the darker side. I'm actually going to use the lighter side, though. Because I kind of want to blend this out like really fast. Alright. Now, you may be noticing or wondering why this eye looks a lot darker than Ratmon's actual eye. And I shall be providing you with an answer to that question. In 0.5 seconds, because I can't seem to let this go. Okay. So maybe a little bit just to add whatever values I removed by erasing. Anyway, we're going to call it quits on that. Cause that's enough all right now you're wondering why the eye looks so dark and lifeless and stuff like that and if you haven't noticed it it's because there's a shine of light in his eye so i'm going to take my trusty tiny eraser and just make a little circle in the top of his eye and would you look at that it's no longer devoid of life and you know and depressed now it is a slightly happier eye all right anyway um just keep in mind i couldn't you can't really see his eyelashes this well in here so i didn't think it was important to draw them because we can't see them as well it's not really a key part of the image if that makes sense it doesn't really stand out anyway 
that's my two cents on how to draw monolithic eyes. Hope this was helpful. Hopefully I can start cutting these videos down in um, time as well. But I'm hoping that showing the step-by-step -step is helpful enough to where this makes a difference. Anyway, see you guys later.